asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Uh, the news at the top of the air would have been full to the brim with information about the Russian poisoning, the alleged Russian poisoning. And this is so huge. I'm going to focus on this for the next few minutes. It's absolutely massive, this story. And it's growing and growing and growing. It's getting ever more serious as the days go on. Now, the United Kingdom announced today, well, Theresa May announced, the Prime Minister, that the UK will expel 23 Russian diplomats after Moscow refused to acknowledge a deadline of midnight last night to respond to claims that Russia was behind the poisoning of Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia. Moscow said that they have no case to answer here. May said the diplomats, the diplomats even, who have one week to leave were identified as undeclared intelligence officers. And she also revoked an invitation to Russia's foreign minister and said the royal family would not be attending the World Cup later this year. Russia continues to maintain that it has had no involvement in the attempted murder of Sergei Skripal. The Russian embassy here in London said the expulsion of 23 diplomats was unacceptable, unjustified and short-sighted. In fact, the BBC reports today, it's the largest mass expulsion since 31 diplomats were ordered out in 1985 after double agent Oleg Gordievsky defected. Former spy Skripal uh, and his daughter remained critically ill in hospital. Detective Sergeant Nick Bailey fell ill responding to the incident, but he's not in a uh, he's not in imminent danger. He's thought to be improving. Here's the Russian ambassador to the United Kingdom. His name is Alexander Vladimirovich, and he was speaking today with Sky News. Russian ambassador Alexander Vladimirovich. We we consider this uh, measures made by the uh, British government, as I said, absolutely unacceptable, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because we believe that the Britain should follow the international law under their obligations on the uh, organization of the prohibition of the chemical weapons. If they have any suspicions on nerve gas or something like that, they have to make an application to the organization and uh, make a request. And uh, f so far, uh, we didn't get any samples. What have you actually been told are the sanctions that are going to happen now? The Prime Minister will tell. There will be, there will be definitely, there will be expulsions. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, as you understand in the diplomatic practice, uh, there will be answers from the Russian side. So you expect expulsions from Moscow of British diplomats? Well, this is the, uh, always in diplomacy, there was always a reciprocity. Do you think that Russia has pointed the, the finger of suspicion at itself in many ways, with the, the president saying, well, traitors will kick the bucket? That suggests, doesn't it, that he's inciting, at the very least, some sort of aggression towards the kind of people uh, like Mr. Skripal? That was absolutely a different context. Uh, as far as this case, you know, the only thing that he said, that we have to get the proofs. Do you not feel, though, that the Russian president, in his language, has, in effect, made suspicion pointed at Russia? No. By saying things like that? No. No, in a word he said. Now, he was obviously speaking with Sky just before May announced that 23 diplomats would be kicked out, speaking with Sky News there. Nothing has changed today in terms of the media coverage in the UK. This is very important. I wouldn't labour this day in, day out, unless it was vitally important. It's very important this, that we look at this in, in, in the context of what's happening at the moment and we dissect it because you can use this to demonstrate to people just how the media is working with um, central banks, is working with governments to basically skew issues in different directions and keep the truth from the general public or at least not ask any questions or ask the questions that maybe Joe and Josephine Public are asking themselves. So that's what the media is doing. I've select a couple, selected even a couple of choice cuts for you. You might remember John Sweeney from BBC Panorama. Remember him? 
He became infamous a few years ago for screaming in the face of Tommy Davis, Anne Archer's son, at LA's Scientology Centre. You might remember that. Now, Sweeney's latest investigation, and that's what we'll call it for the moment, an investigation, has taken place in Russia. The Panorama crew went to Russia to cover the looming election. And the result of that visit to Russia will feature in Panorama this evening. It's on the BBC tonight. You'll be able to catch it on the BBC iPlayer. So Sweeney went to Russia, right? Do you think John Sweeney went to Russia as an objective, impartial journalist who wanted to find out what the land or what the lie of the land was really like in Russia? Well, of course he didn't. Of course he didn't. Here's BBC Rachel Borden. We've heard a lot from Rachel in the last few days. This is Rachel Borden speaking with John Sweeney. Borden asking the questions. Is there a danger we can get a little bit paranoid about this and assume that there's something sinister going on in every single case when there really is? Um, in, um, in every single case, it would be silly. And certainly some of the names have been put out in the media. I think it's far-fetched. But this case, the, the, the two poisonings, in Salisbury, that's a nerve agent. You cannot buy a nerve agent in a shop. Um, what? Jesus Christ. I was, just, I was just about to send Caroline out to get some nerve agent. Um, it's made by states, and Russia's got a track record. Russia has got a track record for hunting down and killing people. It sees as traitors, and Vladimir Putin has said exactly that. So there's, um, this is dark stuff. No point in watching Panorama tonight then, right? <laughs> right? You're getting it right there from John Sweeney. We went to Russia to do a film about the opposition. How does Vladimir Putin treat them? So how does Vladimir Putin treat the opposition? Shot, stabbed, tasered. That's what happens. Now, the Kremlin says they've got nothing to do with this, but certainly his two leading contenders, one who was shot dead before uh, three years ago, the other has been barred from the election. And then when we go there we get spied on and lied about. And then eventually Russian TV... When you say, how did you... Did you know this was happening? Had you a sense that people were following (laughs) you? It was was like Scientology in the snow. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) I remember that one, John. (laughs) We all remember that that one. one. We all remember that one. It's hilarious, isn't it? Sweeney has talked about... He's alleged that Putin is murdering the opposition willy-nilly. People are being shot, stabbed, tased, and they're having a right good laugh, Nikki Campbell and Rachel Borden. Nobody knows who did this, but people are trying to push and push and push Russia, but it's all a good laugh. Sweeney did have a word for football fans who might travel. So football came up. I wrote about this yesterday. I've never been right in my life. You know, Nostradamus I am not. I make these predictions every now and then. They never come true. The World Cup won't be in Russia this summer. Or there might be a World Cup in Russia, but a half a dozen teams or more will not play and will have their own tournament in England, is my tuppence worth. Anyway, Sweeney had a word for football fans who might travel. You're going to um, Russia, enjoy the sport, have fun. But watch out. For me... For me, and this is my own personal view, having read books about Nazi Germany, it felt some of the time like being inside Nazi Germany in 1933, very early on. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. BBC journalist compared Russia to Nazi Germany because it reminded him of books that he read. (laughs) A challenge... An objection from the Chuckle brother and the Chuckle sister. Campbell and Borden. Challenge, maybe. Jesus, John, there are a lot of Russian people living in this country. They won't like you comparing Russia to Nazi Germany. There are a lot of Russians listening to the BBC World Service, John. They're not going to be happy. That's a bit much, isn't it? Not at all. Here's Nicky. It's just going to be this World Cup going to be his, uh, was it the third, the Jesse Owen Olympics, the 36 Olympics? It's, who knows? Who knows? Jesse Owens, the Olympics. I phoned up Tom Cruise, the actor Tom Cruise. He was as shocked as me. Did you hear that shit on BBC Radio 5, Tom? No. Could you repeat it? Because I can't believe my fucking ears. I can't believe my fucking ears either. 
Speaking of ears, I envy Roger Daltrey. Apparently Roger is as deaf as a post now. You think, I wouldn't mind not being able to hear any of this shit on a daily basis coming from the national broadcaster. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is this going to be his 1936 Jesse Owens moment? Said Nicky Campbell. Gets worse, Tom. Tom Cruise, big listener to the programme. Over to my favourite and your favourite presenter, mad as a box of frogs, Kay Burley. Now, this afternoon, Kay spoke with Tara McCormick. She's a senior lecturer in international politics at Leicester University. Tara was brought on to be cannon fodder. Tara believes it is wrong to blame Russia without any evidence at all. It is certainly wrong, thinks, says Tara, certainly wrong to take action against Russia without any evidence. So Tara was set up to be confronted by the fearless Kay Burley. I think in this clip we can hear Tara set out her her thesis, her her opinion on the events of recent days. Can we? We can. Almost immediately that uh, the alleged poisoning happened, we had an incredible rush, both uh, from British politicians and from much of the media, to uh, blame Russia. We have on the one hand the police now saying this is an investigation that is going to take many months it's very complicated and yet we had many of our politicians and much of the media saying almost from day one what are we going to do to punish russia we have had an absolute absence of even the mildest kind of critical uh, mildest questions about well what has gone on what actually would be the advantage for example to the russian state to poison someone who had a been in jail in Russia for several years, uh, lived here then for many years and had been part of a spy swap, which states actually spend years setting up. I like Tara. That was very good. That was very eloquent, very succinct and very appropriate. Why would the Russians do it? Where's the evidence? Nice and calm. Typical academic approach, I would have said. Burley asked her where the nerve agent came from. Burley started to revert to type, became a bit catty, a bit niggly and a bit sarcastic. You'll hear it now in a minute. Where does the nerve agent come from? I don't know, says Tara. They're investigating that. Shouldn't we investigate it? They argued a bit about who else would want to kill Skripal. This interview was on Sky News' website, by the way. And they squabbled over the fact that the police story keeps changing. At all times, Tara McCormick keeps her cool, keeps repeating the same thing. I don't know, Kay. I'm saying kicking out diplomats, making threats, when there is no conclusion to the investigation, when the police don't know what's going on, this is wrong. It's typical of the climate we're living in today. Then Burley says to Tara McCormick, well, Putin has threatened people, you know. About the um, the anecdotal um, comments from uh, Putin saying that he was going to bump people like this off. Um, I haven't actually seen those. Okay. Um, what do you think about them? You just well, have I to... haven't seen it. Okay. Well, I I'm, seen I'm telling you that, that, that anecdotally, it. this has been uh, said that he has said people like this and okay. of those he wants to bump them off. I mean, would that well, have just I been would... a slightly um, silly aside I from ha- the Russian president? Well, I think your question is a very good illustration of the lack of kind of critical questions from the media. Now, you're oh, telling right. you, okay. you, you are asking me yeah. to make a firm comment no, on I'm an not. anecdote. No, I'm not. I'm asking your view. On an anecdote. Yes, I'm you're not, asking I'm me asking to I'm asking ha- your view. I'm, you, you know, you're saying yeah, it's definitely on not Putin. A, on an anec- I'm saying no, other no, no, people no. have suggested. No, What I have said Should we shout each other down or can I just ask it. my question? Thank you. Of course, Burley wasn't asking any questions there. Burley was doing what Burley does best, lying through her teeth and putting words in the mouth of her interviewee, who never said, never said in the interview at all, that Putin didn't do it. This is, this is your news. She never said that. This is what they do very well, presenters like Burley. Have a listen to a bit more of it. Thank you. So, 
The anecdotal uh, suggestion is that Putin has said, oh, we're going to bump these people off. You're saying he obviously would not have said that because it's probably not him. Is that what She never said anything of the sort. She said, I didn't hear what Putin has said. I've not heard it, so I can't comment on something I haven't heard. Not him. Is that what you're saying? No, I didn't say that. I said it's an anecdote and I have not heard that. So you're asking me to make a firm comment on what you are saying is an anecdote. Okay. I mean, this is not really a kind of sensible way right. of going about investigating a potentially very serious issue. Well done, Tara McCormick. You see, you've got to keep your cool in that situation and don't do what people like Burley want you to do, which is to start shouting and start getting a bit hot under the collar and to lose your train of thought. This Tara McCormick's a bit of a star. I've never seen her before. Burley, on the other hand, is utterly vile. She is a creature of the night, isn't she? Remember Dracula? Who, who made Dracula? Bram Stoker's Dracula with Gary Oldman. Who made that film? I can't remember. Gary Oldman was in it. Do you remember the blood-sucking concubines, his slaves, who revealed themselves to Keanu Reeves? That's Burley right there. Vile. The worst of the worst. Murdoch, stooge, put in there to humiliate Tara McCormick, or do the best she possibly could to humiliate her, because Tara, a notable academic, I've read a little bit about her today, somebody very much respected in the field of international politics, at least in academia, is saying we shouldn't be jumping to conclusions, we should not be blaming Russia. So she was to be brought on to be destroyed. Tara wasn't having any of that. Too good for her. And if you watch the video, you can see that Tara McCormick is utterly repulsed by Burley. I think anybody who's ever encountered Burley has to have a shower afterwards. Let's give the last word to Tara McCormick. This is very good stuff because she reminds us all that those screaming loudest about taking action against Putin were the very same people screaming about Iraq and Afghanistan and all the rest of it. Last word to Tara McCormick. Now, we also know we can look at Iraq, the Chilcot report, we can look at the House of Commons report on the Libyan intervention. We know that uh, the Blair government, Cameron's government, did engage in active disinformation so we know that that's recent history. Now, at the very least, the very least, our media, our politicians need to ask at least some questions to say, or need to at least say, well, let's actually wait until this okay. investigation is done. So that is all I'm saying. We have no evidence. We need a proper investigation. And yet what we see... Uh, from most of our politicians, from much of our media, Good girl. is an absolutely kind of um, a, a jump to blame Russia when the truth is okay. we I mean, do not know yet. Yeah, the truth is we don't know yet. Barley tried to turn it into a bit of nonsense at the end about the Putin video being on YouTube with Tara McCormick was having none of it. Barley basically got her arse handed to her on a platter by an intelligent academic who will never again be invited onto Sky News. Of that, you can be certain.